hello students in the last lecture we have discussed about the wireless local area networks in this lecture we are going to study about the wired local area local area networks so uh, in this very first point is ethernet protocol while dealing with the wired local area network we have to understand the concept of ethernet protocol what is ethernet protocol it's the very basic question the most dominant technology of for the lan is the ethernet correct this protocol was developed in 1976 by the xerox uh, xerox corporation uh, palo alto research center so it is also known as parc park uh, for wired lans it is still in the use because ethernet was able to update itself to meet the needs of the time so uh, that lan concept concept was uh, developed in the 1976 but we are still using that why because it has that ability to develop or update itself to meet the need of today's generation since it is invention uh, it has gone through the four generation so what is uh, what to which factor we can call it as a invention previously there was something which was invented after some time people found that there is something problem in that system so they invent solution for that so the second system which they develop is the invention likewise the ethernet gone through the four different generation four generation is nothing but your standard ethernet okay which is going to which gives you the uh, speed of 10 mbps after that uh, there was a fast ethernet the speed of fast ethernet was 100 mbps after that gigabit ether ethernet which gives the speed of 1 gigabits per second and uh, Uh, the fourth stage or the fourth generation you can call this which is 10 gigabit ethernet that's 10 gbps right so these are the four different uh, generations of the ethernet through which uh, the total invention was done so ethernet evolution as you can see this whatever just i just uh, said i am going to repeat it standard ethernet is the very first uh, development after that fast ethernet gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet so uh, this indicates see gigabit ethernet it indicates the speed of that ethernet was 1 gigabits per second 10 gigabit ethernet is nothing but the speed of that ethernet is about 10 gigabits per second for standard ethernet the speed was very low as compared to the 10 gigabit ethernet it was uh, up to 10 mbps only megabits per second uh, in case of fast ethernet the rate slightly increases to the 100 mbps so this is nothing but the ethernet evolution through the four different generations now we are going to study each and every in detail now see this this is a standard ethernet which gives you the speed of 10 mbps 10 megabits per second right now standard ethernet is a original ethernet technology with the data rate of 10 mbps defined as ieee 802.3 standard right so ieee 802.3 is nothing but the standard of the ethernet correct now the ethernet provides a connectionless service which means each frame sent is independent of the previous or next frame right so this ethernet technology was provides a connectionless service now what does that mean the one frame which you are sending that is independent of the previous state uh, previous frame or the next frame you are going to send ethernet does not have connection establishment or the connection termination phases right so connection establishment phase and the connection termination phase these phases are absent in the standard ethernet the sender sends the frame without verifying whether the receiver is ready or not okay so, uh, so there is a sign obviously we are communicating over there and in communication there are basic two uh, members are there one is sender and another one is receiver correct so sender is going to send the data uh, even he, he he is not aware that whether the receiver is ready or not right that is why this there are there are some kind of faults or there are some kinds of distances you can say which was in the standard ethernet the sender sends the frame without verifying whether the receiver is ready or not correct this may result in dropping of the frames suppose if a receiver is not ready but at that moment of point sender sends the data then what will happen with that information that information obviously will get lost correct so that is why there is there is there was a lots of data dropping or the result in the dropping of the frames this frame dropping is not known to the sender to, or to the receiver okay so neither of them are aware of this thing that the data is dropping somewhere correct so sender is thinking that ki i have sent the data and receiver may uh, received it successfully 
okay on the other hand receiver is saying that uh, the sender didn't send the data till correct so both of them are not aware of the data is dropping in between now ethernet is also unreliable if a frame is corrupted during the transmission and the receiver finds out the about the uh, receiver founds finds the finds out about the corruption the receiver drops the frame silently okay so uh, corruption of a data or corrupted data files may is the one of the major reason in the standard ethernet protocols so that is why the system of standard ethernet was uh, unreliable you can say now uh, let's learn the frame format okay in which frame format the data is sent in the standard ethernet protocol the ethernet frame contains seven fields okay as shown in the following figure as you can see the figure there are seven fields first field is nothing but your preamble okay second start frame delimiter third destination address fourth source address fifth length six data plus padding and seven frame check sequence so on the uh, other side of this block of this format there is something written which is total size seven byte preamble is about seven bytes start frame delimiter is about one byte destination address is about six bytes source address also six bytes length is about two bytes data and padding this is approximately equal to 646 to 1500 bytes and frame check sequence that is of four bytes right so the total uh, capacity of each frame is given uh, after that we'll learn or we'll study what is the function of each and every frame now see this preamble what is preamble each frame starts with the preamble of a seven bytes okay if i want to transmit a frame i have to start that frame with the preamble of seven bytes as we know the pream size of preamble is seven bytes that is why it is written as the preamble of seven bytes it has alternate ones and zeros and it is used for the synchronization of receiver to the incoming frames now what is the basic function of preamble is that it will uh, synchronize between the receiver and the incoming frames right so it will uh, kind of alert the receiver that frame is coming this is what is the basic function of preamble and it is just nothing but uh, alternate zeros and one the combination of alternative zero and one and the main important thing which you have to remember here the size of preamble is of seven bytes okay after that there is a start frame delimiter now sfd what is that a delimiter is added to the separate preamble from an actual frame okay delimiter is what it you can call it as a one of the part of the preamble okay the field of this will the field is of one byte as we know the size of the sfd is about one byte okay one zero one zero one zero one one this is what is the signal which defines the beginning of the frame okay if you want to transmit a frame then at the beginning of the frame you will send the data which is one zero one zero one zero double one okay uh so that will indicate the fr frame was initiated uh the last two bits are one one correct so what is that the last two bits are one one and what does that indicate and alter the receiver uh that the next field is the destination address now if the last two bits of your sfd are one one then it will alert the destination that whatever is the next frame which is coming that is nothing but the destination address so one one at the last of the uh, last of the sfd will indicate the next frame is of destination address simple as that right after that destination address it is of six bits six bytes sorry so destination address this field of uh, this field is of six bytes that is 48 bits and contains the address of destination station or the stations to receive the packet okay in simplest word destination address is what it is just nothing but an address of station either single station or the multiple stations whose address the station who are going to receive the data packets right after that the source address sa this is also a, a field of six bytes correct and it contains the address of sender of the packet now whoever is the sender of the packet the source address will contain the address of that source right the person or the pc or the computer who is going to send the data packet the address of that uh, field is stored in the source address after that the fifth one is type or length 
right if the value of this field is less than 1518 uh, be specific here uh, if the value of this field that is <coughs> the value of type or the length is less than 1518 that is uh, that it specifies the length of data field that follows and if it is more than 1536 it specifies the upper layer protocol whose packet is encapsulated in the frame now if the length of the uh, or the value of the length or type is less than 1518 it specifies the length of data field that follows and if it is greater than 1536 then it specifies the upper layer protocol whose packet is encapsulated in the frame right uh, next one is your data this field carries the data having maximum length of 46 uh, minimum length of 46 and maximum length of 1500 bytes so whatever the data or whatever information you want to transmit that is going to be in the data frame correct and the size of the data frame is minimum size is 46 and maximum size is 1500 bytes uh, if it is less than 46 bytes then it needs to be padded with the extra zeros suppose as i told you the minimum length of the data is 46 and if you are having a data which is less than 46 then what you have to do you have to pad the data with what with extra zeros so as we know on the left hand side if we add number of zeros those are well placeless correct so there will be no value of those zero who are, which zeros we are adding on the left side of the data Right. So just to make the entire frame of 46 bytes, we are adding those, those extra bits or extra zeros, you can say. Right. After that, the next and very last point is frame check sequence. The last field contains error detection information. Right. So uh, if you are uh, transmitting a data or if you are transmitting a frame and if there is any kind of error, in that then this field will work uh, it is also uh, it is like in that state mostly crc32 code is used for the error detection so crc is one of the uh, major technology you can say or the method you can say in which we can detect the error cyclic redundancy check is nothing but crc cyclic redundancy check after that uh, we have to study the frame length. Okay, what is the length of the total frame which we are transmitting? Minimum, minimum and maximum length of the frame are restricted in the Ethernet. Okay, whatever is the length of the frame, uh, minimum or maximum, no, doesn't like it doesn't matter which length we are talking about. It is restricted in case of Ethernet. So, what is the maximum length? Five hundred and twelve bits. Sorry, uh, minimum length is five hundred and twelve bits. That is total 64 bytes okay and that includes 18 bytes of header or uh, header header or a trailer uh, six bytes of the source address six bytes of the destination address two bytes of the length or type and four bytes of crc so as we have already seen what is this source or address is of six bytes destination address is also of six bytes okay uh, for the length or type they are using two bytes and the, for the CRC, they are having four bytes. CRC is for cyclic redundancy check. If there is any error, so we can detect that error with the help of CRC. That is why four bytes are reserved for that. Okay. After that, 46 bytes minimum data length. If the packet is less than 46 bytes, then padding, uh, padding is added to make up the difference. As I already explained this point, if you are having a data which is less than 46 bytes, then you have to pad the data with the number of zeros. Right? This is what is the minimum length. And in case of maximum length, what is the maximum length? It is 12,144 bits. So that is 1518 bytes. Correct? Minimum length was 64 bytes and maximum length is 1518 byte and this 1518 bytes this includes 18 bytes of header and trailer okay so uh, in case of that again six bytes of the source address six bytes of the destination address two bytes of the length or type and four bytes for the crc right and 1500 bytes the maximum data length so we have already seen this the minimum length is about 46 and maximum length is about 1500 for data correct as you can see uh, whatever i just uh, described here you can simply see this in this uh, figure okay this this uh, gives you the proper or detailed explanation destination address is of six bytes source address six bytes length that is 
two bytes after that data and padding okay if you are having a data which is more than 46 then you don't need to pad the data okay when we need a padding of data when the data which we are transmitting which is less than 46 bytes in that case you have to pad your data with the number of extra zeros the minimum length for this data and padding is about 46 bytes and maximum length is about 1500 bytes and last four bits so last four bytes are reserved for the crc that is cyclic redundancy check where if you can find whether is there whether there is any kind of error in this data or not right so the entire frame which you are transmitting is about uh, length the minimum length is one five hundred and twelve bits that is sixty four bytes and the maximum length which you can use here is twelve thousand one hundred forty four bits that is one thousand five hundred and eighteen bytes all right so this is how your frame actually works in case of ethernet after that the addressing okay each station on an ethernet network such as pc workstation or printer okay ethernet is what it is a connection in that connection or in that network you can connect number of number of electronic devices such as uh, pcs workstation or printers it has its own network interface card that is nic network interface card the nic provides a link layer address to the station okay what is the function of that nic uh, network interface card it will provide you the link uh, link layer address okay the ethernet address is of six bytes right and is written in the hexadecimal with the colon between the bytes now i will tell you the example of this so that you can understand this statement properly for an example say this the following shows an ethernet mac address so if you check the uh, if your pc is connected to the ethernet and if you check the mac address of that you will find some data like this okay now uh how to read this data and what are the different types of this data and data will see this an address can be of uh, uh can be one of the three types this address can be of the one of the three type of this unicast refers to only one computer in lan okay if you are having only single computer or single pc in a lan then you will find a unicast address uh, after that multicast address refers a group of addresses so if you are having multiple devices connected in a lan connection then you will have the each and every device in that network will have a multicast address and the last one is broadcast uh, it refers to all the stations in the lan okay now how to read the data if all the bits are in uh, all if all the bits in the address are one that is address has 48 so in that case how to read it for an example what what is the example given if the address contains all one one means one 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 how many total one this data is in hexadecimal format if we convert that into the binary there will be a 48 one okay it is a broadcast broadcast address so if you are having a 48 one in the address then you can simply say that that address which you have is a broadcast address okay identification of unicast or broadcast address is done by the la least significant bit of the first byte in the destination address so least significant bit is what this okay uh, least significant bit of the first byte so this is what is my first byte and that in that uh, a is my least significant bit okay so what is a a is an hexadecimal number right so i can write simply 1010 in decimal form sorry binary format correct so a is nothing but hexadecimal number and equivalent of this hexadecimal number in case of binary is 1010 and last two bits are 10 right so we have to look for the least significant bit that is 10 now what does that indicate it indicates the unicast address right 5a is my uh, least significant these are my least significant bit and in that a is my hexadecimal number correct how to represent hexadecimal into its equivalent binary 1010 right and in case of 1010 least two significant bits are 1 and 0 so last bit is my 0 that is why i can simply say that this address is of unicast type right see the second example 59321021a10 okay now 
here the second bit is 9 how to represent 9 1 0 0 1 so last bit is 1 here right if the last bit is 1 then i can simply say that this is a multicast address multicast type address and if all if the address contain all one that is 48 1 so in that case this is nothing but your broadcast broadcast address okay hope you guys are understanding the difference between unicast type multicast type and broadcast type correct in case of unicast the last we have to check for the least significant bit which is a how to represent a 1010 and if the last digit is zero then you can simply say the address is of unicast type if the last digit is one then you can say the address is of multicast and if the address is containing all the one that is total 48 one this then in that case the address is of broadcast now uh, 48 1 as you can see this address is in the hexadecimal format if you write this hexadecimal format into equivalent binary then you will be observed there will be a total 48 1 okay now as you can see that uh, this is nothing but a unicast and multicast address or uh, like how method of transferring the frames this is my first byte um, sorry this is my first byte this is my second byte likewise i will i am going to have total six bytes now unicast is what at this position if there is zero then you can say that address is of unicast type at this position where the dot is there okay if there is one then you can say the address is of multicast type okay so you have to you have to look for the least significant bit which is at this position and if there is zero it is of unicast if there is one then it is multicast and if all the bits are one then you can say it is of broadcast simple right after that implementation now this is again a important point uh, where you have to remember lots of things implementation how to implement it the standard ethernet protocol the standard ethernet defines several implementations but only four of them became popular which are listed in the following table so there are too many uh, implementation techniques but out of those too many techniques there are only four be who became popular right so to understand the ethernet uses a baseband signal it may use a coaxial cable unshielded twisted pair cable or a fiber optic cable so in the previous lecture we have studied about all these types of cables okay so implementation technique is 10 base 5 10 base 2 10 base t and 10 base f now what is this 10 indicates 10 indicates 10 gigabit sorry 10 mbps rate so in case of standard ethernet we know that the uh, transfer rate or the data rate is about 10 mbps right so this 10 indicates the rate 10 mbps okay and 5 indicates the medium okay if there is a 5 it is going to use a thick coaxial cable right so what is coaxial cable how it works what is its structure we have seen this in last lecture coaxial cable the for example for that it just a uh, uh, everyone might have seen the cable which is coming from the antenna and connected to your television right that cable is nothing but your coaxial cable the medium length of that cable is about 500 meters in case of 10 base 5 implementation right and such two wires you are going to require next one is your 10 base 2 now 10 again indicates 10 mbps data rate and 2 indicates it is going to use a thin coaxial cable okay so there is a difference between thick and thin right and that is why there is a 10 base 5 and 10 base 2 two implementations in case of 10 base 2 it is going to use a, a thin coaxial or you can say rg8 cable right the length medium length is about 185 meters next one is your 10 base t now t is what it is a twisted pair cable correct the, the that might that might be either unshielded or shielded but here it is uh, clearly specified that it is going to use a unshielded twisted pair cable correct the medium length is about 100 meters and you are going to require two such cables and the very last is 10 base f f indicates a fiber optical cable correct again here 10 indicates the 10 mbps data rate and f indicates the this implementation is going to require a fiber optic cable now this is very different different from all the above three okay why because it is using a fiber optics as we asked as we have studied that fiber optic cable uses a light 
to transmit the information now the medium length is about 2000 meter right and you are going to need two such cables this is nothing but the implementation of standard ethernet cable so this is all about the standard ethernet okay so we will see the remaining types of the ethernet in the next lecture